Okay. A lot's happened in 125 years since we had Tesla at the World's Fair demonstrating the first AC power system. We've gone through a whole series of developments all the way through to Edison and to Marconi into 1920s, the first commercial radio station. And we've also gone all the way up from 1947, where we had the first microwave phone relay, all the way through to cellular communications, those big phones, remember those big phones in the 80s? All the way through to today. Now, interestingly enough, in the States, the EPA, which was measuring all this stuff, they stopped measuring EMF over the country in the States in 1979, but already, as you can see there from the very last point, the first mile above the Earth is now filled with two million times the amount of EMF that we've faced in 1900. For about four billion years, the energies that surround life are very simple. We've got something called a Schumann resonance. It kind of goes around the Earth, and it's modulated by atmosphere, by electricity, and by other things. And there was radio signals from distant stars, but that's obviously changed. Now, the standards today, if you can read at the bottom there, are, are based on thermal effects, heat effects on the skin. Now, that's rubbish, because the effects that are causing the problems that we're discussing today are not caused by those. They're caused by biologic effects by the EMF. And I'll start going through them. Now, what led me to this is I, I read the literature. Uh, and as Ian will tell you, I'm no activist. I'm not about to try and bring the government down for crying out loud. I'm just a normal person who works in a clinic with patients. And I listen to, the, I, I read the literature. When professors say this, the new 5G wireless technology involves millimeter waves, which are extremely high frequencies, producing photons of much greater energy that we've already heard about than 4G, and allowing this technology to be used without providing its safety is reckless in the extreme, as the millimeter waves are known to have a profound effect on all parts of the human body. They did studies with this. It was actually a very good study. It was controlled, and they controlled for heat. And if you put Wi-Fi two inches away from a kind of watercress, if you like, garden crest growing, compared to one that's bit, even a bit further away, they're still using Wi-Fi, just further away, you can see the difference. This is an anti-life technology. There is absolutely no doubt about it. I haven't got time to get into this, but also many components of the atmosphere absorb this, okay? It, aff it affects it. And this is a, a, a huge experiment because you're about to globally go around this world, globally, and you're about to bombard it with this, uh, this technology. And God knows what it's going to do for the atmosphere, and people are speculating about that. They've shown effects that, yes, it's not just on the surface, it actually gets past the blood-brain barrier and causes problems deep into the brain. And I knew about this probably 30 years ago. I was listening to experts talking about 30 years ago, or maybe even longer, and they were warning about this. Another paper, but what it's telling you is a reported higher risk of intracranial tumour for mobile phone use over 10 years. Anyone been near mobile phones? That's all of us over 10 years. When it says an odds ratio of 2.2 for glioma, that means it's twice the chance of getting this particular tumour, and on and on and on. And Chris Reeves of brain tumour uh, using cordless phones. And what they find is, they, they say ipsilateral. It's the side you use it on. That's where you get the tumour. This guy, you may have heard of Martin Paul, or Powell. He's a professor emeritus. In other words, he's retired. And you find that these guys tell the truth when they retire. And he's saying, well... I've got an idea. I think that the reason why we're having these biological effects, not thermal, is because it's something to do with VGCC. These are, these are particular channels in the cells. In other words, these channels are being activated by this EMF. These channels are everywhere in all your cells. Okay? And also it affects oxidative and nitrosative stress. This is very important because we now know that these uh, are components of actually control mechanisms in, in, inside the cells. So what he's really saying is that this stuff affects how your cells work and providing strong evidence that these fields can produce an almost instantaneous activation of these cells. So that's the, the hypothesis. It's backed up by actual field work as well. They did studies here looking at all various things with animals, different doses, different frequencies, all the rest of it, different times of dose, and they showed long-term memory was reduced in these test animals. Is anybody seeing an explosion of neurodegenerative problems, Alzheimer's, and all sorts of stuff? Anyone noticing that? Okay, there's many, many reasons for that, and this may well be... Uh, one of the reasons. But remember, it's safe. Because over here, look, it's only to do with anything that bombards the skin. Because if you go over 10 gigahertz, apparently, it's not a problem because it's just going to bounce off you. Here's 11 research groups reporting that between 40 and 130 gigahertz, you get damage to neuronal activity. When it says in vivo, it means live. Okay, just using modest levels of millimeter wave exposure. Okay, so if anyone says to you it doesn't cause any damage and there's no studies, 
That's complete nonsense because there's 11 research, separate research groups reporting nerve damage um, from this irradiation. Another paper, once again, showing that it goes into the brain, into the hypothalamus, and the hypothalamus is areas of, to do with memory, to do with, sadly, when children are abused, these areas can be damaged, and to how you form memory as well. And that animal's head didn't have the phone or the, or the source right near its ear, it had it 40 centimetres away. And who knows when you have a phone, A, you shouldn't, we should not be using these damn things anyway, but when you do, you should have it off your ear. Does everyone know that? You should never have it on your ear. And they're showing with this technology here, even when it's 40 centimetres away, it's causing damage. I have no disrespect to this woman. Hopefully you can hear. What if you could see Wi-Fi signals? It sure would make it easier to figure out where to go to check your email for free. I'm Jen Markham on Buzz60. Artist Nikolai Lamb, known for his photo manipulations, created a series of images of Washington, D.C. landmarks illustrating Wi-Fi signals as different colors. Using data from a Wi-Fi coverage map on the city's website, Lamb depicted how the energy from a Wi-Fi signal travels in waves with different channels, emits the source in a sphere. He also showed how the data travels from routers on multiple signals or colors at the same time, and how trees and buildings can disrupt the signal. Lamb used color to show the individual channels that make up an overall Wi-Fi signal. It'd be so cool if this was a real thing. Can you imagine all the color exploding in dense urban areas? Now all we need is for the passwords to be visible too. Buzz 60, now you know, pass it on. Okay, so now you know, pass it on. I'm not gonna be disrespectful to that lady, but Jesus, you know. This is an app called The Architecture of Radio. Anyone heard about this app? You can go and download it using this horrible technology. But this is a little, all right, it's graphical kind of representation. This is a bit more real. You put it on your, on your computer or on your iPad, and you can look around. It gives you a representation of what's going on around you. Once again, it's graphical, but who wants to live amongst this? And this is now. This is, we haven't even got into the 5G. You want to bring your kids up in this stuff? Bear in mind, what, I've only just started this talk, and bear in mind the amount of damage I've just told you it does to you. You hear the kids in the background? Okay, download that and have a look and, and amaze yourself what's around you, maybe even in this room. Einstein, who's a clever chap, says that you can't demodulate these waves, means they, they just last forever. Some of them get trapped in our atmosphere, and, that's, and we just keep filling up our atmosphere with this stuff. There's things called biological entities, okay, and if, to cut a long story short, they're going too far. They come from outer space, and they found a whole bunch of these on one of the space stations while they were cleaning the windows. And they turn around and say, well, this is a bit interesting. How did they get up here? They must be very tough. That's not a space bacterial entity. That's called a tardigrade, just to show you that there are these things that can survive. This thing can survive unbelievable heat and pressure. So these bacteria and things like that are tough. Anyway, long story short, British scientists looked into it and said, they're not coming from Earth, they're coming from space. And that's, there's three of them there. And there's about 0.1 tons of this stuff falling every day. Did you know that? These, these kind of space bugs coming down. NASA did research on this, and basically in space they become very tough. They, and in, in a sense they're resistant to treatment. So they did studies and they think there's a problem with that. What they found is that this millimeter wave, microwave, it can cause antibiotic resistance. There's arguments either side. But we are hanging on by our fingernails at the moment with antibiotic treatment of disease. Okay? There's about 50,000 people a year in the States, I think, and the equivalent over here that are dying every year because they don't have any, we haven't got antibiotics for them. So is it a good idea to bombard the whole of this planet with this stuff if it has that effect on bacteria and space bacteria that's coming in? You all know this stuff. They've done studies uh, with wheat shoots that causes damage to the wheat shoot, how it grows. They've shown that it causes necrosis in leaves, and there's also damage with birds and with bees, and also even the human sweat ducts are gonna be affected by this technology they hypothesize it's gonna cause pain. And in fact, some of these devices are actually used to do that, if you've ever seen them. This was released by Muckrock, which is a kind of online magazine, and they gave a freedom of information request to one of the American fusion centers, which is a government center to do with security and terrorism. They put in a basic freedom request about something you know, reasonably innocuous, and they were sent by mistake documentation, and the documentation showed how towers and this technology was going to be used to control 
the population. Now, I, th I very rarely will, will put stuff up like this unless I've got an official source. And this was official. He went all through the details of how you affect the human body, even to the point of putting voices in the head. Okay. Now, I, I've seen a demonstration of that done with music, which it can do. Now, this is just, I don't, I'm not going to go off on a tangent about that. They knew about that since in 1974, for crying out loud. So do you really want this stuff bombarding you? I don't think so. They're also talking about using this kinds of technology to monitor for disease with permanent crowd monitoring. They're also talking about the Gavi organization, which is Mr. Gates. Anyone know about Bill Gates? Talking about how they use the, they want these technologies so they can monitor kids in Africa to make sure that they've been vaccinated. You may believe in vaccination, I don't know, but I don't think you should be monitoring people with this technology. Also, ID2020 is coming in, sponsored by the usual culprits, and effectively they're using this to give everybody an ID. That's what they want to do globally by 2020. I think they're a little bit behind. And they want to be able to monitor you from the cradle to the grave. And they want to make sure that you are doing everything they want you to do. So if they want you to take a drug, you will be monitored for it and measured. This is what this technology is, being, is really being ramped up for. This is the video. I'll, I'll, maybe I won't play this. And it lights up really nice. Maybe I'll play you this one. Okay. This is one woman's experience of living on the top floor under cell antennas for two months. Um, it started with my daughter. She initially got a rash on her leg that was sort of unexplainable. And when she was trying to explain to me what it felt like, she kept saying it was kind of funny because it wasn't hurting inside or on the skin. She said it was hurting in the skin. And uh, then a few days later, she got another rash on her arm and then another small kind of stranger rash and it was the same thing and then one day in the kitchen she was holding something and she dropped it because she said it felt like the blood in her hand went cold and in a wave along her hand to her fingertips and then her hand stayed about stayed numb for about 15 minutes some more of the symptoms include a, a sort of hissing in my ear um, in particular when I'm in my apartment but for about three days anywhere I went it would just sort of come in I kind of felt like an antenna and I'd sort of kind of go like trying to find the place where the, the hissing or the buzzing stopped. Um, I've not slept in my apartment since last Saturday, um, so a week ago now, and the buzzing went away after about three days. And also the feeling of um, tingling all over my body slowly started to go away, but I have noticed that whenever I'm in other buildings now or anywhere close to, I don't even know what, because I was never sensitive before. I'm, I'm no Luddite. I have, you know, I have computers. I have all the stuff that, that you know, most of us have, and I've never been sensitive at all. But now, when, wherever I go, I'm feeling the same as I felt in my apartment, feeling dizzy and nauseous and a sort of a metallic taste in my mouth, um, headache and pressure on my head, and just feeling like I want to sort of faint or, or throw up. And that's wherever I go now. So I found myself becoming increasingly sensitive to my own, you know, my own computer and my own cell phone in ways that I never was before. Anybody getting those symptoms? There's various papers out that talk about this may be one of the reasons is to do with how, and this is actually saying it's nothing to do with heat, it's how to do with where water is bound on cells that may be affected by this technology. Loads of reviews. A normal brain MRI will not show someone who's sensitive to this. But they've actually published a study uh, and they found an abnormality described as a hyperconnectivity of different parts of the brain with people that are sensitive to Wi Fi. And interestingly, it's also the differential diagnosis, which you could also say might be linked, is someone who may have had a head trauma or who is susceptible to yeast or yeast infection. Those people seem to, in this study, have to been, uh, there seems to be a link between those and people who are sensitive to Wi-Fi. And yeast infections are massively prevalent. Does anyone use Facebook? Anyone use social media? Those bloody things that go off, bing, bong, bang, every five minutes, where it drives you absolutely nuts when a text comes in and all the rest of it. They found that, that checking the, your Facebook or your Instagram when something goes off is linked to part of your brain shrinking. Did you know that? It's called the nucleus accumbens, shrinking. Now, I said this before, they don't know if, anyone, if it's the fact that it causes it to shrink or people with that small part of the brain are the people that like... Uh, uh, using the Facebook, we don't know, but I suspect it's the former. Uh, it's, it's regarded the reward center. This thing is linked in with things, also Instagram, it's linked in with things like addiction and other things as well. Now, isn't it interesting that when you undergo a traumatic brain injury, that same part of the brain shrinks? And as I've said countless times, you've ever heard me speak before, if you've got children, for crying out loud, do not let them go on this stuff. And if you're going to use it, be absolutely 
judicious. You've got to be very discreet in how you use this stuff. Do not buy it on all day. That's my advice to you. Also, what this does is it creates apathy. Okay, and I could talk all day long on the implications of that. And the studies are there. So if you're on this, if you're constantly looking at your bloody phone and this thing's going off all day and you're bing and bang and text, then you need to understand that there's going to be a, there's going to be a, a reckoning to that. About two billion years ago, the forerunner of your cells were born. Each one of your cells was born by two bacteria. They kind of got together and had a little marriage. One of the bacteria could survive in very low oxygen, the other in very high oxygen. And this becomes important when we talk about 5G. And they've worked this out because they looked at the DNA. These things here, they're mitochondrion. That's the descendant of one bacteria. And the rest of the cell is descendant of the other bacteria. They kind of formed a nice marriage and it survived over the millions of years of our, of our evolution. We used to think that the DNA ran the cell. Now we think that this little bugger here has actually got a lot more to do with it. And it uses uh, reactive, reactive oxygen intermediaries, and it also uses probably low electromagnetic fields itself to communicate and help run this cell. Well, there's a problem there, because these little things produce energy, okay? And they produce most of the energy in your body. In actual fact, they produce over 90% of the energy, and at any one point in time, you, you have to produce every day your own body weight of molecules of energy that are made in these little factories, you've probably only got about five seconds storage at any one point in time. Now, if you don't get that energy, you're, you're obviously, you're very seriously unwell and probably will die. And things like cancer and chronic fatigue are linked to that. These are enzymes in these little factories that make this energy. Now, there's various debates, I'm just gonna go quickly through this, about how it's done. But the point is this, what you don't wanna do is you don't wanna damage them. Because if you damage them, you're gonna get things like cancer. And you're, and you're, or you're going to die, okay? Because suddenly, your ability to make loads of energy stops, and you start making very low amounts of energy. So microwave, millimeter wave technology, damages the mitochondria in a time response, dose response way. That's a classic way of proving that something causes harm. Okay, so already we have evidence that it does that. And it damages two particular key enzymes, one's called succinate dehydrogenase, and the other's called cytochrome C oxidase. Now this is science. This is not someone with a tinfoil hat talking crap. Excuse my French. This is absolutely science, okay? Now, there's a human resonance again, and we talked about that. Now, does anyone meditate here? Well, the frequencies of the human resonance are often quoted very, very similar to the same frequencies in the brain when you meditate, and there's actually studies on it, and I pulled one up there. And therefore, do you really want to be mucking around with these frequencies? And also, we found out, because you've got different frequencies in your brain, that you need to be healthy and, be, and to be alive. And we absolutely know that these mitochondria are also involved in doing that as well. See this thing here? This is kind of a diagram of a cell, if you like. you kind of got the center part of the DNA. You've got these little mitochondria floating around in a kind of cytoplasm, if you like. There are thousands of them in each cell, and they're communicating and they're helping to run the cell, keep you alive. If you're going to bombard that with millimeter wave technology, you're absolutely going to disrupt that. So this is the reason why we're very, 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 very worried about this, because the key thing, the key thing in your cell that keeps you alive is going to be affected by this technology. Is 5G about to destroy 2 billion years of evolution? And that's the question that I'm asking, and I'd like an answer. I think it's a very reasonable request. Can we have an answer on this, please? Because without this stuff working, we're dead. Why are they doing this? Why are they bringing whoever they are? Why are they bringing 5G in? Okay, the inter did you hear him? The, the, the guy, the, the, the head, head guy said, oh, the Internet of Things. The Internet of Things, where everything's going to be labelled. We're all going to be, who want, I don't want to be labelled. I don't want to be where stuff that's got chips somewhere over the place. And thank you very much. Has anybody heard of the Sentinel World Simulation? Published about 2000, maybe seven, eight, nine. This gives you an idea of why they need this information. The Sentinel World Simulation Project, the ultimate goal envisaged by this gentleman, a continuously running, continuously updated, mirror model of the real world that can be used to predict and evaluate future events and courses of action. The military have already doing it. This was a particular project they did called the MNE4. They used data from various countries in Europe and America. And what they did, they used it as an exercise to see how they could influence another country to do what they wanted them to do. These things are up and running at all sorts of levels, commercially and militarily. But they need information, they need data and they need 5G to bring this about, okay? So 5G is, isn't just about it's gonna give you cancer and it's very dangerous, there's a whole other aspect to this. Who understands that AI is a massive threat to your jobs? 
These are serious studies from serious academic schools, all predicted probably in the next 10 years, 12 years, probably about half of you are going to lose your, your job to AI technology. Okay, and in some countries up to 60 to 80 percent. They need 5G to bring this technology on, on board. There are various people involved in this. I'm going to take you down a tangent. This is a guy, he's a professor, very well respected. He's the head of something uh, called the Basic Income Earth Network, because if you're going to leave, lose your job, you need to be paid, so you need a basic income. Sounds very, very, sounds great. So he, they're all pushing this. In fact, it's been pushed globally. He's also interested in linguistic justice. Um, now, what linguistic, linguistic justice means, if you're English speaking, you need to pay a tax to someone who doesn't speak English, because they need to speak English in order to get on in the world. This is the kind of thinking of these people, okay? You're dealing with some very interesting characters. Other professors are involved in this, talking about we need this kind of stuff. Basic income, the pilots are everywhere in the world because they know you are going to lose your job, so they're going to have to give you a basic income. The problem is, you become poorer on basic income. Also, I want to ask you a question. When some, the government says to you, I'm going to give you money, do you think that's going to be the end of it? Do you think you might be told where you can live and what you can do? Okay, and this is what you need to start thinking. There's a social side to this technology. And it's very well researched. There's another guy from the Royal Society of Arts, which I've said to Ian before and said on stage, I thought it was a benign organization. I didn't realize they were activists. This guy here, no disrespect to him, but I disagree with him. He obviously went to a conference, you can read it on, on the DVD later or whatever, where he was radicalized because the language they're talking about, how do you decapitate a king? How do you bring down power? This is incredible. This is the Royal Society of Arts. And this guy's the head of the actual uh, project in Scotland at the moment, testing uh, this basic income in this country, or in, in, in Britain. And he says now, now hear this, this is the language. We now have the opportunity to move the basic income conversation forward and identify practical ways to run a pilot which works locally and has global resonance. That is a globalist language. If you know anything about Agenda 2020 and 2030 and all these sorts of things, it, basic income can't be another small response. Bear in mind this is coming on the back of 5G and AI that's going to take your jobs. It should be radical, it should be world-changing, and it should be effective, and it's just a starting point. It's the beginning of a new social contract. So when 5G comes in, AI technology is going to come on board, you're going to lose your job, now you're going to be paid an income by the government, and it's the beginning of a new social contract. And he says, we need to start talking about land ownership, and we need to start talking about how you're taxed. And really what this is, in my interpretation, is, well, it's got a different idea, like you may ask Ian later, is that means you won't own land, you won't own a house, you won't own a car, okay? You, th this is where they're pushing this. They started to push all this with documents many, many years ago. I'm not going to get too much into this. This is all from published literature, and it all came about equality. Everyone's got to be equal. No, I've got no problem with equality. I couldn't give a damn what race, gender you are, as long as you're a decent person. But that was just the beginning, and they knew where they were going to take this, because they're then going to take into social equity and equity of outcome. Equity of outcome means everybody has to have an equal outcome. Okay, you can't earn more than someone else, you can't have more energy than someone else, you're all gonna live in the same size house. There's documents demonstrating this, don't have time to get into it. And but so to be fair, you have to have equity. All these things have to be equal, the amount of children you have. If you look at how this ideology, and it is an ideology, has been used before in the history of this planet, that also goes down to, to what your beliefs are and what you can say. I think you just said someone was just gagged, wanting to speak about certain things. So everything must be monitored. This is the reason why you're having so-called smart technology. The Fitbits, the things that go on you. Everything's got to be on it. You're just being teased with this stuff at the moment. You have to kind of understand where this is going to go. And that means you can't have privacy, okay? Privacy is gone, okay, according to these people, whoever these are, or they are. And isn't it interesting how things are just moving along at the same thing. Suddenly we're watching lots of programs about people being watched. Yeah, we're, getting, we're kind of warmed up to this. Loads of programs about kids being watched, adults being watched, for whatever it is. And now you've got, and then Amazon Echo comes out. And suddenly, isn't it great? I don't, I'm not bothered about having a microphone in my house that's recording everything I say, and he's selling it on to third party people. Can you imagine anyone here who's above a certain age, 20 years ago, 25, 30 years ago, anyone said, I'm gonna put a microphone in your house and you would have gone, you've got to be crazy, okay? That, you talk to younger people today, no disrespect to anyone here that is more informed. Isn't it interesting that the head of Apple was really pushing these cars, this whole kind of car automotive technology, and you've got Uber, share your car. Airbnb, share your house. 
Isn't it interesting how this technology, these ideas are coming in? Autonomy requires privacy. And the psychological papers are very clear. You don't have privacy, you've got no autonomy. This way of framing the issue makes sense if you understand privacy solely as political or legal concept, and its political importance is certainly part of what makes privacy so important. What is private is what is yours alone to control and without interference from others or the state. But the concept of privacy also matters for another deeper reason. It is intimately connected to what it is to be an autonomous person. The connection between loss of privacy and dehumanization is a well-known and ancient fact. You cannot be persuaded to give up your privacy. This technology uh, is part of, do of doing that. Anyone like this guy? He's calling for universal basic income. He thinks he's got a church and he's the head of it, mode, no doubt. Here's another guy from the Basic Income Earth Network, just to show you how this social side is changing. We need to create this new connected culture. Everyone's going to be connected. We need to drive us to compete for social contribution. If you understand your history, you know what he's really talking about. To achieve that, many people will need to undergo training. So you haven't got a job, you go on basic income, and now they're going to train you as educators and community organizers to create and maintain a positive social climate. I recommend that a basic income will not come by itself, rather it will be coupled with socio-educational training. You're talking about 5G, but you're talking about a much bigger thing. China's already on it. They've got something called the social, who's heard of the social credit system? You're scored, almost like a Facebook liking system. When you say what the government wants you to say, you're given a, a plus point. When you're not, you're given a negative point. You get enough negative points, you're gone. You're caught, you're, once you lose trust, once they lose trust in you, this is how they say it, you're never allowed back in the system. I think at the moment, Ian, I don't know the data on it, but it's between what, 11 and 13 million Chinese people have been put in the sin bin, which means you don't travel, you're now blocked from travel. This is all, I'm gonna tell you here and now, this is, this is a template for what's gonna come here. Okay, in my opinion, from what I've seen. When we look here at 5G, this is China. China's really pushing this. And also they're pushing this along the Silk Road. They're pushing this uh, in Africa, their technology. And they need 5G to, up to, to step their system up. They're massively a template now for what's going to go on in the rest of the world. Here's a simple video. Some of you may have seen this. Well, let's see how long it uh, takes you to find me. Thank you very much, let's go. Okay,追溯到说,出现每一张脸,都可以对应说他的身份证,以及他所经过,比方说在过去一周,我们回溯他的行经路程,我们也做了像人和车的匹配,同时在人像匹配还包括亲属关系匹配,然后是你经常接触
right behind me. You can see uh, just over over my left shoulder there. Hello, hello. hello guys. Where is he, where is he? I've been expecting you. Oh, maybe these guys aren't in on the joke. If you have nothing to hide, you have nothing to fear. 对, 是这样。所以说, Nijueda,为什么? 可能是更起了更大的作用。Would it worry you to know that your every move, your every association was being watched? Does that change something fundamental? Um, honestly, I won't feel very comfortable. There's a certain level of discomfort. First, I think technology by itself is a tool for human being, um, just like a weapon. If it is in the wrong hands, like in a, in a terrorist hands, it might do very bad things, right? But government do develop weapons. Um, I think there are reasons that um, technology keep advancing, like artificial intelligence. It can be applied to do a lot of good things. So who gets a warm, fuzzy feeling? <laughs> the whole prediction thing as well, that's a whole other talk. This is a professor. We've already created the blueprint for innovative cyborg tissue and recently shown how to mingle this in the brain. They give you an injection into the head, opens a mesh, and that connects your brain up to the internet. It's already up and going, and it is, is being very well tolerated. This guy is one of the leading chemists in the world, so if you think this is conspiracy, you, you're absolutely wrong. This is what they're doing, they're connecting the brains of animals together. The animals can be thousands of miles apart, they start to work as one, almost like a biological computer. This is a template for what they want to do with humans. Here's another guy, he's another UK professor. Personal computing will become intrapersonal and intracellular. Each human neuron will be hijacked by a self-growing, self-repairing molecular network. Computers will be networks of polymer filaments grown inside together with a human. Seeds of the networks will be injected into embryos in the first month of their development, and they will form a gigantic network inside the brain. Computers will be inside us. They will span all living creatures in a united computing network. If that doesn't turn your stomach, you're not a human being. Now, this is, these, are the, this is, this, these are scientists. This is where this is going. This is how this is developing. It requires 5G. This is a book called The Scientific Conquest of Death, and this is a chapter by a guy called Ray Kurzweil, who's the head of DeepMind for Google, and he says it will be routine practice to have billions of nanobots coursing through the capillaries of your brains, communicating with each other, as well with our biological neurons and with the internet. One application would provide full immersion into virtual reality, and if you didn't understand that, basically he says he's going to plug your brain into the internet by 2030. Now you need to understand these are the very, very serious players. They require 5G to do this as well. Rolling Stone done an interview on him. He wants to use this technology to bring his dead father back to life. You have to understand what, what these people are about. These people are, going to, are setting the course for your future. Other people have got more common sense. 
in his book, uh, Post-Human Future, because this is what they're talking about. They're taking his technology and going beyond human. Post-human, transhuman. Okay, this is where they're pushing all this. There's lots of things he says, but effectively, if you've got an elite who are transhuman and you've got normal humans who just want to live their life, you've got a problem. Not everyone can or wants to receive the same level of enhancement. Haven't got time to get into what those enhancements are, but they've got them. For example, having a mesh put in your head, human rights may be threatened. And the same issue of superiority would apply to the question of inequality. Some people might not be able to afford it. And the reality is what he's saying is, if you look to history, you look to nature, what happens when you get a superior species? What does it do to the inferior species? It subjugates it or removes it. And at the highest level, they're talking about the human race being removed by this technology, by AI. This technology is so advanced, it is absolutely frightening. <laughs> this was the ninth conference. They've got, we're on the 11th conference. Uh, beyond humanism, okay? This is why you need, this is why they're rolling this 5G out. There's a whole thing behind this, okay? It's not just simple 5G. Down at the bottom, they're talking about it. What it's also worth noting, this is seriously discussed, is the formation of new cultures and societies which consist of non-human subjects mingling with humans or forming their own separate and previously unseen worlds. They're talking about the new AI um, brains, okay? The new AI things that are coming in. Who's heard of synths? They're building synths now, okay, which is a kind of synthetic human, okay, to, to be powered and to be embodied with this, con this alleged kind of conscience, consciousness, which is from an artificial intelligence. I'm going to, now the, one of the guys, I'm just very going to quickly wrap this up. I don't have time to get into this, but 5G is central to all this, is I'm showing you documentation. This isn't conspiracy, okay? This is scientific documentation, whether you're aware of it or not. This is a very, very, these people in my, in my, I believe they're insane, but you know, hopefully I'm not the only one on this planet who believes that. I'm going to show you now a clip. I played it before. Some of you may see it. This guy you're going to hear is Geordie Rose or Gordy Rose. He is the developer with a company of quantum computers. Quantum computers are used by NASA. His computers are used by NASA and Google and others to develop the AI technology, the AI thing that's going to be in this, this new synth bodies, okay? This kind of consciousness. These computers already connect outside of this dimension with two to the 500 power dimensions. That's from their white papers and their literature. Two to the 500 power dimensions they connect. And he's talking about using this intelligence from these dimensions in these machines to bring them to life. Now this is actually for real, this is not a joke, and this is him speaking. Listen very carefully. I don't know if any of you are uh, turn of the century weird fiction fans, but there's this guy named H.P. Lovecraft, who's a very famous American weird fiction author. And he exposed a, a view which is called cosmicism. And the essence of cosmicism is cosmic indifference. So he, what he was saying is basically, yes, there are these massively intelligent entities out there, but they're not good, they're not evil. They just don't give a shit about you even in the slightest. The same way that you don't care about an ant is the same way they're not going to care about you. And these things that we're summoning into the world now are not demons, they're not evil, but they're more like the Lovecraftian great old ones. There are entities that are not necessarily going to be aligned with what we want. So this transition is really, really massively important for our entire species to navigate and going back to that thing that Sam Harris was saying, nobody is paying attention. This thing is happening in the background while people bicker about politics and what, what's going to be in the health care plan in the U.S. And underneath it all is this rising tsunami that, if we're not careful, is going to wipe us all out. Okay, so 5G is a component of this. This is what you need to understand. That's the leading guy in the world. NASA has his computer. This is not a raving lunatic down the pub talking to you. Now, there's a lot more to talk on that. I'm not, I haven't got time. But you need to understand something. 5G is one of the final nails in the coffin before AI comes in. And when AI comes in, you, people have heard me say this before. Yes, there are, fine, there are good aspects of it. But the reality is I've looked at this in great detail, far more I can go into today. And I do not see the human race surviving this down the line. I really do not, okay? And I'm sorry to put a downer on a Saturday night and tell you that, but you do need to understand, and I urge you to research and look at this for yourself. Um, I'm 
I'm quite happy to take questions afterwards. I think you're going to hear from Mark. This probably this has gone a little bit longer than I planned. Anyway, thank you for listening to me, and hopefully it was worth coming down today. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me.